going on a long-term extended bike tour in a country that isn't your own is a real learning experience. Now obviously we learned a lot about bike touring in general, but we also learned a few things that are unique to Australia. So today we're going to take a look at a few tips, tricks, pieces of advice, or just things to bear in mind if you decide you want to go and ride a bicycle around Australia. Alright guys, appreciate you clicking on the video. Before we get into it, I'd just like to ask if you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that button. It really helps us out and we're going to be uploading a lot more videos like this with useful bike touring information and particularly bike touring information about Australia. And with that being said, let's take a look at five tips that we learned while bike touring around Australia. Australia has a lot of unsealed roads, and those can quickly turn into rutted out four-wheel drive tracks if you're not careful. What starts off as a beautiful, meandering gravel road through the forest can very quickly become an absolute slop fest. Check Google Maps satellite view and maybe even speak to some locals if you're unsure about the condition of a road. Now sometimes this can just be part of the adventure, but there are other times when it can cause a lot of frustration. And if you ever see this sign, watch out. The term camping seems to carry a different meaning in Australia compared to other countries. It seems that more often than not, when people here talk about camping, they're talking about car camping either with a swag or something like that, or even in a caravan or an RV, which is obviously pretty different from how we camp. And with that being said, caravan parks and campsites in Australia often aren't very well set up for bike tourers. Now, don't get me wrong, we've stayed in some really amazing campsites and caravan parks, but more often than not, they've been less than ideal. It seems that a nice soft patch of grass that's suitable for a tent is very rare, although a concrete pad for a caravan isn't. We've even turned up to a caravan park before to find that the entire camping area is just a gravel lot to park a caravan in. So be careful when you make that booking. Following on from the last point, showgrounds or racetracks or places like that can be really amazing places to camp. It seems that just about every small country town has a showground. And that's where they'll hold fairs or, or the Sunday market or the rodeo when it comes to town. But the rest of the time, they're generally not being used. Now, if you've watched our videos, you'll know that we camped at the showgrounds when we landed in Rolleston, and it ended up being one of the best camping spots of the trip. We also camped at a racetrack in Coolin in WA, way back in our seventh video, which really helped us out seeing as the nearby official campsite was just in a terrible state. As always, be respectful and leave no trace. It's common knowledge that water can be quite scarce in a lot of Australia. Many places in Australia are extremely dry and a lot of places aren't hooked up to water so they rely on rainwater or bore water or dams. So a lot of places install vandal proof taps, which are like a regular tap, but instead of having a handle, they require a key to use, which you can buy at Bunnings for 15 bucks. Probably don't need to explain why it's a wise investment to grab one of those. Now we all know it's a good idea to be as visible as possible when you're on the road and picking up some high vis gear or fluoro as it's known in Australia is a really great way to ensure that people can see you on the road. But Australians really love fluoro. I don't really know how to describe it but there's like some sort of cultural phenomena going on here. It's like when you wear a fluoro vest not only are you more visible out there but it's like people actually respect you more. It sounds crazy, but when I started wearing a fluoro vest out there, things changed. All of a sudden, I had less people cutting me off, I had less people overtaking me too close, 
in general, like drivers were just much kinder to me. Now, I know you could just explain this away by claiming that it's just that now they could actually see me, but it definitely seemed like more than that. Now, you can read into that one however you like, but I would say that a $6 fluoro vest from Bunnings is a pretty low-cost investment to try it out yourself. All right, guys, hopefully you found that useful, and if you have any tips for bike touring in Australia, drop them down below in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider it because it does help us out a lot. And thanks for watching.